Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in the, this video today I'm going to talk a bit about printer profiles, ICC profiles, what they are, more to the point where you can get them from, why you might use them, different sources, different types of printer profiles and a few little bits and pieces about aspects of using them you might not be overly familiar with. So first of all uh, this is based on some questions uh, I have been asked uh, so please do ask questions on my videos I really do appreciate it and it often gives me ideas because if one person asks a question ten people have thought of it and not asked so there we go first up was are the manufacturer profiles good enough some printers and I've tested quite a lot of printers over the last couple of years uh, some uh, printers and most of the good ones the manufacturers will supply profiles with their papers uh, so if I get an Epson printer, a good Epson printer, I'll probably find there are profiles to go with various Epson papers. So what do profiles do? Well, think of a profile as a little file of information that sums up the characteristics of the paper, the ink and the printer in a way that when you're imaging software or the printer driver wants to print, it gives it a form of translation between what you see on the screen or which is a, a version of what's on the file uh, that is translated into an optimal format for printing. Now ideally this means that if everything's set up color management wise what you see on the pre screen should generally approximate to what you see on the, on the print. Now I've got quite a lot of uh, videos and articles looking at colour management in detail so I won't go into it in any more detail than that. Suffice to say that using profiles for black and white, not necessarily, but certainly for colour, is an integral part of my printing if I want good quality. All of these prints here, these are just a few of the prints from recent tests of printers. I generate an awful lot of these and then have to find out what to do with them. But anyway. What do we do about profiles? Well, great. If you're just going to, if you're buying an Epson printer or a Canon printer and you're just using Epson or Canon media, hopefully you'll be able to find the profile that matches your paper for your printer. And is a simple matter, um, certainly if you use some of the manufacturer's printing software, it's a simple matter of selecting the right profile. It gets used and there you go. That's it. It's done its job. So, you know, what about these manufacturers profiles are they good enough well yes these days they are much better than they used to be a little bit of printer history is that 10 15 years ago the printers themselves were much more variable from unit to unit they were also much less unpredictable in their print output so the profiles for a printer 10, 15 years ago, had to do a lot more work. So your profiles might not be optimal for that particular printer, your particular printer, because it might be slightly different from the printer that the company had created the profiles with. So there's a variability in, uh, print, in, in printers back then. That has improved drastically, as have the basic characteristics of the printer which make them easier to profile. That means that manufacturer profiles, if you can find them these days, are pretty good. Now, there may be reasons you want to make your own profiles or you want to use other papers uh, that you might want to try something else. But if you can find manufacturer profiles, then good, use them. Uh, you probably won't go very wrong with them. The interesting bit comes when you want to use a wider variety of papers. Not all papers will be supported for a particular printer. So Epson produce papers which they don't have profiles for for some of their printers. Um, it would be a massive job. And remember that from the manufacturer's point of view, the printer manufacturers and paper makers as well, profiles have one important job to do, and that is sell printers and sell paper. 
now. I'll come back to that aspect of it, but always remember they are there for solid business and marketing reasons. Um, they're not, there's quite a bit of work goes into making profiles, so they are not producing them just because they feel it's a nice thing to do. There is a benefit for it, so it's always worth remembering that. I said that if you want to use third party papers and you know, without reading on the back, I can't remember which ones of these ones here are third party papers or not. What about custom profiles? Well, companies will make you profiles and what they will normally use is uh, send you a file which you print out. Uh, here's one that fits on two sheets of A4. Here's one that fits on a single sheet of A3 plus or 13 inch by 19 inch. They'll send you that file, you print that very carefully and make sure you follow the instructions very carefully in printing it because if you make a mistake in the printing, the profile will come out wrong um, and there's nothing can be done about it. The critical bit about making profiles is always printing something here. So that's how you, how you make your profiles. Now, companies, they'll send you this, you send them back the reading of you know, the, uh, this, this print, they will measure the colors on this bit of paper and create a profile using various bits of software. Now, I've got lots of articles over the years and lots of, I've got a few videos on it covering making profiles. Um, I've covered things like this, the Color Checker Studio. This was the old i1 studio. Previously to that, it was the Color Monkey. I've looked at the Spider Print Solution going right back to when it originally came out nearly 20 years ago. And the one I use with these big targets here is this. This is an i1 ISIS XL. It will read this entire sheet in one go. This thing that looks like a giant laminator. Um, it's a scanning spectrum photometer. Um, I'm going to suggest that probably not many people have these. I know I wrote a review of it and I'm one of the few people ever to write a review on it because they're about four or five thousand pounds, I think, for the current price for one of these. So um, it's not something I would expect people to have. These are much cheaper. Um, for one of these, your target is like that. Now, you'll notice there are far fewer colors in the target for this. Now, that's partly made up for by the way that this works in a two-stage process. But if you want to make high-end profiles, you use kit like this, not kit like this. Um, interesting question as to how many people would notice the difference between a profile made with this and a profile made with this. Probably not as many as the manufacturers would like you to believe. Um, it's far more about your editing and your photography and that matching that to the printer is probably far more important than uh, than the profiling in many respects in you know, saying custom profile the difference between good and very good profiles let's come back to third party paper suppliers now this is the famous brand names as well as ones you may only have in your low country um, locally I've got quite a lot of reviews. I always include paper testing in my printer reviews, both from the original equipment manufacturer, so Epson or Canon, depending on the printer, and also usually from some local paper suppliers. Some of these paper suppliers, and it may be in your country as well, but certainly in the UK, we've got quite a lot of them, and I know in the States as well, they will actually supply profiles. So you'll get um, someone like Photospeed, Permajet, Paper Spectrum here. Paper Spectrum is my local supplier uh, based in Leicester where I live here. And they will provide profiles for some printers, for some papers. Now remember it's quite a lot of work to make these profiles so it's an effort they have to go to to do it. Um, some of the companies, if you buy paper from them, they will even supply you with a target to print out. You send it to them and they'll make you a custom profile. So somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, what difference is there between the custom profiles that they make for you and the profiles they supply? Well, it's quite possible that the profiles that profiles they supply will have been created with much larger targets using a device like this. Whereas the ones they make for you uh, when you're sending your paper uh, stuff in are made on smaller targets. So ones like that. In general, 
more patches, the more coloured patches you get, the better the quality of the profile. I say there are exceptions, but in general, that's the case for it. So why are they offering profiles for papers and also to do it for you uh, as, as a custom profile? Um, I'm afraid it's paper marketing. Um, you provide profiles to sell paper. You provide custom profiles as a premium service to convince people that they're getting a premium product. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, yes, it's nice of them to do it. But as I said, even back going back to the manufacturers who, who provide profiles, it's to sell printers mainly. Um, the paper suppliers who provide profiles, it's to sell paper. Um, it doesn't make them any less useful, but just always remember why people are doing this sort of stuff. Um, and paper sales is, a, is an interesting area in itself. I may well sort of delve into this further at some point. But I always remember somebody at a paper supplier telling me that when you were selling paper to people, people often bought paper on feel. Now it's fine buying paper because it feels good. How often do you see a print and go, oh, I must feel the paper. You don't, you look at the print. Um, there's a difference between paper marketing and actual what the prints looks like. Um, but that's just, a, that's just paper marketing for you. Um, it's a very complex area. A few quick observations on that. There are very few specialist paper makers and even fewer specialist paper coaters because it's the coating that accepts the ink is the important bit in many parts of that. Don't assume that just because a paper has a famous name attached to it that it is any better than a good quality paper from a third party supplier. Um, I've tested all sorts of them and basically um, a famous name on a box of paper, yeah, that means it's probably fairly good, but it doesn't automatically says, ah, this is a quality brand. I do not associate the brand with the print. Now. If you do, then check you're not falling for just marketing, because that's all it is. When you see displays of prints at a photo show, and they are from, you know, on famous uh, brands of paper, or even less well known, you're looking at the photos. They're selling you paper. Just remember where this comes from. The profiles are part of that. Now, the profiles from a quality point of view are an important thing, and you should use them if possible. So I make profiles to go with my reviews. They're free for people who want them. You, you need to email me for them because they're free for non-commercial use. Um, why do I do it? Well, I do it as part of my testing. I do it partly because it gives me a feel for how the paper performs. And I use them with test images to get a good feel for that. But, you know, I'm, I'm marketing as well. What do the profiles do? Well, the profiles sell my reviews, don't they? Um, in the same way that offering custom uh, paper profiles is a premium product. Well, if you read one of my reviews, look, profiles. You know, um, marketing comes in everywhere. I mean, that, that's maybe a bit of an extreme case, but uh, you hopefully know what I'm driving at here. And the key really is just to use profiles. Um, I did mention black and white earlier. Some of these are made using profiles. Quite often for better printers though, it's worth checking out the black and white print mode of the driver because for many papers, many printers, higher end printers, you will find that the black and white print mode gives a more neutral look better quality look than you get off profiles. Not always, um, some of these I do print with profiles, uh, particularly on lower end printers where the custom profiles that I make with all the patches on this really do make quite a difference. If you're interested in making your own profiles, by the way, uh, something like the Color Check Studio here may be a bit expensive for something just making a few profiles. If you're a member of a camera club, why not see if there are some other people interested in making profiles to improve their printing? Uh, sharing one of these between you know people at a club is a great way of making your own profiles, improving your printing, and uh, gives you something else to chat with after club meetings so at the break. So uh, use profiles. Uh, I mentioned 
uses of profiles that you might not be familiar with. Rendering intents. When you look at your print settings, you'll notice that there is an option for perceptual rendering intent and relative colorimetric rendering intent. There may be others as well, maybe saturation, absolute, but the two main ones are perceptual, relative, colorimetric. I get people say, which one should I use? Well, when I build profiles, I build them to produce slightly different results. So what you do, use soft proofing on your system. It gives an indication, it's not foolproof, but have a look at either setting perceptual or relative colorimetric for the printer profile for, for the rendering intent when you're using it. You may see a difference. You may not see a difference on it. Now, I've mentioned this in a few of my printing videos and things, but I just mentioned it because there's something people often ask me about using ICC profiles. So profiles, yeah, use them. If manufacturers supply them, use those, try them. If you want to try your own, lots of ways of doing it. If paper suppliers supply them, use them. In many respects, there are some printers where there aren't many profiles. The Epson 8550, for example, uh, the some of the smaller Canon printers I've looked at, there just aren't that range of now. So look for paper suppliers that either supply profiles or even make them for you. If you have to, you have to print something out, send it off, but look for that. It's a way of getting better quality. And in fact, for some of the smaller printers, using a third party paper and a custom profile gets you far better results than you will just by using the standard settings. Anyway, that's a quick you know, ride through ICC profiles. If you've got any questions, please do ask. Um, I say it's what gives me ideas for these uh, short videos. And, uh, Hope that's of use. Thanks.